wrong. This is all the Oh, you too. Yeah, you got this one. Yeah. Me, me, me. my message. <laughs> and, uh, uh, like, oh, that's my home. home. <laughs> it's a mess. Thanks, Brad. Uh, Let me know. Yeah, Yeah. Thanks. Shall we talk of dog training, Barbara? Sorry? Should we talk about dog training the, and behavior the monitor in the alphabet? <laughs> uh, I have a new puppy. E. So I'll be dog training for another year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, just turn around. Yeah, yeah just turn around. But the weird thing is, just before you said that, I was trying to think of what my life was like. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm like, well, now I have the perfect way to remember what it is. Yeah. He's a good So how's this going? Okay. Yeah. Actually, thank you. You got all the attention you needed. Did you think of it right there or earlier? That's forward, and I saw you. Oh yeah. So I just checked it out. I make it with cannabis. It's a cannabis scent. I just pretty. I have to. Yeah. Three six four. Yeah. Oh my god. I know. It's so Turn around. Can I open it? It's a new one. No. Be careful. I didn't even go. It turned to jello. And it was a really. Yeah. It goes like that. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes. Oh, I think it was really like. I can feel that. Yeah. And that was like. Yeah. It's got the nice cherry. If I have it on my machine, I can send it back yeah. to you. Can you send it to David and we get a printout? Hmm. Hmm. I think if I'm smart and deliberate, I can make a picture. Sorry. I don't know the meat, the butter scoop for me. Tell me. Right Here's the newest. Do you have my email? No, I don't know. Okay, let's talk. Because I'm. Um, you have three minutes? Just in passing. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. I drew up a statement. <laughs> and uh, uh, oil part of this difficulty is mine because I wrote it up and I agreed with it, but then I forgot to mail it out to everyone. Hmm. How old is she? <laughs> so can I mail it? But I sent it. To Barbara, uh, to look <coughs> at it. Uh, she's the secretary. I sent it to her. I said, "Look it over, and uh, let's talk about it." But I haven't followed it up. But the statement exists, so it'll go out to David, and he can get a printout perhaps today, and you can all look at it. Sure. Uh, so part of this discussion is up. Pierre, but um, <laughs> say, um, <clears throat> uh, when did you see last night, Joe? Bradley. I probably mean Bradley. <laughs> I thought it was like, but did they see last? Yeah, what did you see last night, bro? That that uh, huh? Um, I just wondered. I I saw that. Uh, well, many things. One of them that comes to mind is uh, just personally. Uh, this view uh, that I have of myself that I'm not even. I shouldn't say I'm not aware. Uh, Given the dream I did with you, um, and the conclusion, <clears throat> um, that I have a view of myself that's uh, wrong, mm. and uh, um, that's not so obvious to see. Um, uh, uh, no, no, it's difficult to see. It's obvious. It's true. Say that again, please. It's difficult to see. It is not that it is not obvious that it is true. It is <clears> not <throat> obvious that. I'm having fun with language. Yeah. Right. 
make it simple. Yeah. It's difficult to see, but once you see, it's obvious. You're right. <laughs> right? In, every, in, in everything. <clears throat> so, uh, say, uh, Yanni, mm -hmm. uh, where were you last night? Um, at NS. What? Visions and dreams. Oh, what did you see? Um, well, I saw, I, I mean, well, let's, let's see, where do I see? To be honest, last night was one of the best nights I've had for a long time, so I had a beautiful talk and I saw, um, I saw the reason why I'm in philosophy, hmm. or what, what I love about philosophy the most. Yeah. Clear so, statement, too. What'd you say? Well, I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What did you say before that? Ask him what he saw before that. Uh, Barbara, what did you say? Um, right now I'm... Okay, okay. okay. She's seeing something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gina, what did you say? A clear, okay, a clearer uh, view of the logos because it can move from a rational place to a irrational place, but it still is a logos. And the ideas, whether they be false or not, people can be dominated by good ones and false ones, and the power of them, both positively and negatively, is profound. Mm -hmm. Curious. What would you say? What would I say to that? I wasn't there last night, so in one sense, I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, I like what she said, and if I were to say something about that, I'd probably want to know how she saw that. Oh, what did you see last night? Last night was amazing. It was like uh, what what I saw was like. Uh, all this, all this providence, like going, like it, it's like coming down, kind of through the logos uh, on everybody who's, you know, who's there, who's into it. I saw a lot of providence. Let me change the question. <clears throat> uh, how did you see? This? the group function? Hmm. Hmm. Not yet, I'm thinking. Good question, though. <laughs> well, the group, one, one easy way of how were they functioning was that each person was taking in what has had been said, and when they expressed their own vision, it was as if they could link it to a real structure and build on it. That was one thing yeah. that happened. So implication being that we were all seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. We were all focused on the questions, what is it that sees and hears and thinks, right? Mm -hmm. And that if we held it as a question all the time, we might come to the self, right? Or, I don't know, come to the self is my expression. There was fluidity, openness, mm. sharing, was natural, unfolding. Very fluid, mm -hmm. right? It was going from one person to the next and sharing uh, what they, how they saw the logos, and uh, built up to this uh, definition that uh, hit me. <clears throat> oh. What does that mean? Hmm. Sounds like quite a, quite a celebration. I wasn't there. It was a unity. Well, yes, a unity. Or a oneness. But it was like we were all brought to participate in the same vision. Or, I don't know. Don't you think it was all like we were facing face to face with um, this idea of self or exploring the self? That's not quite right. Well, what came to me was all these people looking centered in a circle looking at a brilliant white light you know <laughs> the brilliant light of being it looked like an initiation or 
you yeah, know, that's what, in one way, which is embarrassing, but pro probably true. There you go. Mm. Uh, I would like to be able to add uh, with some elephant and uh, enlightening verbiage, but everything that has been said so far captures it very mm. What does that mean? Hmm. Uh, which part? What I just See, said, or what we said? What, what the, are the person who was asking night? the questions didn't contribute a damn thing. Hmm. That's not true. Well, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> that's no, not true. <laughs> until the end. <laughs> until, oh, until the end. Yeah. Okay. Until the end. Right. <clears throat> true. Right. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I'm not discounting mm. any answer so far, but, but what does that mean? Um, well, it means that we all, that we all, um, that we all were in it. That I don't, I'm thinking that we're, we're functioning like a music group. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like you're all playing on the same tune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Both. Well, oh, what crap. do you think about group counterattack coming? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the level of that tone? I think it was yeah, it was high, it was, it was high level. Yeah, next level. They'd hurt me level. Mm. You mean everybody was working on uh, on a, as you call it a high level, a sophisticated high level of philosophical reflection? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was coming out on just... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of unblockedness happening. happening. <laughs> you know, it seemed like people were expressing without hesitation or anxiety or fear. They That's were just right. saying. That's right. <clears throat> Open. Mm-hmm. Open. It was, it was different than a private exploration. Louder. It was different than a private exploration. There was, there's something, uh, there was something more because of all the participants. Mm. What does that mean? Oh. We're, we're all sharing something. Uh, on the same high level of reflection, drawing upon some of the most profound writers mm. and authors. Um, the group self? Hmm. Yeah, what was it? Who entered? I, uh, who, who entered that idea? I think his name is uh, Xenophanes. In his latest reincarnation as Jeff? <laughs> Or well, Pierre. It's probably <laughs> not a great term, the group self. I didn't want to just say the one self. What is it that is the whole that thinks, I like the, the whole that hears? Louder, please. I said, what is it that is the whole that thinks, the whole that hears, and the whole that sees? So that would include a group. Yeah. yeah. Group and everyone self. was keeping the whole of the discussion as right. well, mm -hmm. simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The whole. Whole self. Like no one was being lectured to. Mm. They were all teachers. Yeah. They were all volunteering what they saw. Mm. Is that right? I wasn't there, but it sounds great. And I believe, <laughs> and I believe that this group could do it. <clears throat> what do you think of this now? I happen to know, <clears throat> perhaps you know the same person. Um, say, David, do you know Yanni? I've spoken with this gentleman. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Do, do you know? I've met him. Oh. <laughs> I see him. <laughs> you, you too? I see him, yeah. <laughs> oh. I hear him. <laughs> Yanni is interested in filming something that we do, and he's looking around to see what might be a good thing to film. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was last night a good night? Yeah, last night was a good night. Yeah. Would that fulfill the... I think that would uh, um, exceed the... Yeah. Uh, when did you realize that? 
Um, I think it was um. When did you realize it? Well, I th it might have been with Eldar's dream. It was definitely with Jeff's um, discussion. I think it was with Eldar's dream and, and, and going into Jeff's discussion. No, actually, it was when, when you were... Um, it was on the, the, the left poster... Uh, um, Everybody was contributing ideas about the logos, and they were all um, they were all working together and like like a, the harmoniously. Yeah, yeah. Just, that was a real harmony. A real harmony. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I like that. A real harmony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A harmony of beings. A har well, a harmony of beings. Yeah, about being. About being. By the way. Uh, would you expect that to be uh, common around the place? Around this place? <laughs> <laughs> but elsewhere, I mean, elsewhere, think? no, it's very rare. I would say, yeah, it's very rare. Ah, yeah. oh. what did she like? Have we answered the question? What does it mean, Brad? Well, go ahead. It's a breakthrough. Hmm. It's a breakthrough. A breakthrough. Yeah. It may be a breakthrough, but did that answer the question? No. 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 no the not. question. The but question it helped. The okay. question's how? Yeah. How? What's the question? I forgot. Other. How? Or what's what's that mean? Right. How? <laughs> that means there's a jump in all the philosophers last night. Like there was a significant, obvious change, and that was a jump. <laughs> oh, look at the cake. I'd really like to know if Bradley would mind describing breakthrough to what? If you do, sure. let me know. A breakthrough in uh, being able to all the all the members being able to share their individual scene mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> of what <laughs> of what we're trying to answer. What is the logos? Which I also noticed was inferior to the final definition, hmm. which was. Well, relationship with the self. So the final definition, um, I, when it happened, uh, I'll try to get it. I, I, it almost slipped away. I think it slipped away when it even happened. But the final definition was uh, uh, the intelligy, I mean, the intelligibility, um, right in the model of the paradigm of of the maker. An expression of the yeah, inherent the logos, intelligibility the of the idea needs in the mind. The path of logos but, to be complete. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> mm. oh. Wow. Oops. <laughs> wow. So that would mean that I didn't. what you said Please. that everything is fits perfectly would mean both the logos and the path logos fit perfectly. Because no one, <laughs> no one in the history of the world who has ever imposed a path logos on their child, mm -hmm. no one has ever done it with the intent to harm the child. Mm -hmm. They're sharing their personal view in one way. It's the highest it's their highest vision. The problem is that we see it as complete and it's incomplete. Right. But it is a learning. It's a learning that's only partially true. And that lack of completeness drives us into anger and frustration and keeps us from understanding. Hmm. So both are going on, see? all the time. So then when you challenge a path of logos, you're looking for a higher way of learning. But 
Hey, wouldn't you agree a mother and a father who look at their child that just was born and they know the child will never be able to talk because of a brain deficiency would love to have a child with a problem. Mm. Could you say that again? The plane was going over. <laughs> right? <laughs> if parents looked at a newborn baby who had a brain deficiency and would never be able to speak, wouldn't they love to have a child who would have a pathologos rather than that child who had a brain deficiency who could never speak at all? Okay. Yeah. I think that's kind equally of well. Your price for existing here is is must accept the fact that you're going to be born within a pathologos. Ah! Your, your, your because price? no <laughs> one can bring birth to a child and raise them. Oh, born. Mm. No one can be perfect <laughs> enough <laughs> not to pass on some state of mind called a pathologos to their child. Amen. Period. Is that right? Yep. Is that right? <laughs> Come on. Let me hear. What else? I'm sorry. I was just, I lost my phone. And okay. I, we'll I get you back. And then I, my brain just went somewhere when you were t saying something really important there. Is, is the... Oh, my new little puppy's lucky. So... No one would choose to give a pathologist to your child. <laughs> Their child, I think, was the point, wasn't it? No yeah. one would say, hey... Great! This is a blank slate. Let me give them a pathologos. Right. You know? If they could see it as a blank state, which wasn't in the original. But they don't state. see that they're doing the pathologos. They don't, they they don't, they don't know they're, they're passing it, right? Right. That's what we know. Yeah. And no, the other thing I'm was, always benefiting my kid. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always benefiting my child. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The other part was <laughs> that everyone will be born into a pathologos, unavoidable. Yes. Uh, <laughs> your price of being here. Yeah. Now, wait, let, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> um, what do you think someone absolutely new to our group might have seen last night? I don't know. Did you you talk to Montez? Didn't you? What did he see? I did talk to him, but uh, that wasn't when I got the answer to the question. Well, when did you? What's the answer that you got when you got the answer? <laughs> Well, I thought I'd build a mystery oh, up and have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry. Slow down. That's okay. I'm, I'm not the <laughs> See, Daniel, remember Daniel? He came oh. back last oh, night. Oh, too. Yeah. Been a while. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and he said, Pierre, he said, I have had an incredible number of victories. <whistles> and, uh, the reason why I'm here is, you know, I, I lost it. I still have victories, but I lost myself. Wow. And he brought a friend with him by the name of Montez. So Montez came over after it was over and he started and exploring a personal problem. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I don't do that on the spur of the moment, you know. Let's have a cup of coffee and paper and pencil and do it here after the session. Well, actually, I said, let's do it before the session. And Daniel said, I don't get up before 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't possibly. <laughs> <Isn't it> <laughs> so I said, I said, okay. I said, after 12 o'clock, you know, we're so, we fell out, we'll find a spot to go in there and talk. And so he said, yep. So this morning I got an email, and the email was from Daniel. And he said, um, things came up, we're not going to be able to be there. Mm -hmm. But he said, Montez said he had never been in a group in his whole life, where people could be asked questions, where they volunteered and gave what they thought and they weren't put down for anything. Mm -hmm. He oh, said, wow. I'd like to be like that. Like, I'm, what? He mm -hmm. said, I didn't know it was possible. 
Is that interesting? Yes. yes. Mm. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Mm. So curious. Yeah. Very. Mm. So last night became like bean. an exemplar. Yeah. Mm. So. Last night was like a model. He, he said, "Yeah, he's going to come back in, a, mm-hmm. in the future and uh, see what see what else is playing and uh, get in talks." Isn't that what we were seeing in the Parmenides with respect to Aristoteles in yesterday and the day before? I'm well, I thought that what we were looking at was at one particular point. Um, Parmenides asks if a certain thing is possible, and the answer he gets from Aristotle is no, it's impo- is it's completely impossible. But and he doesn't say, well, that was wrong, Aristotle, but rather he goes on to demonstrate the opposite position to the one that Aristotle affirmed. Right. So at least that's so. This looks like the same thing with Pierre and the role of Parmenides, which seems somehow fitting. <laughs> Sorry. What do you think? Well, I'm enjoying it now. Oh, okay. When you ask me, what do I think? What is the what is <laughs> the self? What is the, I, I, that? I, I, I was answering your question. Oh, okay. uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I would say what's curious about it is that uh, it, it's it's. Quite apparent that this this kind of group that that participated uh, they're seeing as one mm. on a very nice, profound level, mm. and enjoyed engaging in a group exploration with coming together with, with a variety of views each one could be linked with the other and brought together on a higher unity mm. Mm. and I don't think anyone was bored by it <laughs> right? not even me not yeah all right, all right. wow no I'm <laughs> just joking all right <laughs> pathologistine oh. what does that mean um but like, try it this way. What do you think that guy saw? So you take it off. Hmm. What do you think that guy saw? Montez. I think he saw, well, something that's ideal or something, an ideal way of relating, learning, studying. I, um, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, I think part of what he said also was that uh, when people were asked questions, they weren't put down, they weren't ridiculed, they weren't one-upped, etc. Yeah. And he had never seen that before, mm. you know, for a whole evening. Mm. I want to um, I want to add one thing to it, which you've, you've really already pinned, but to Montez's comment, which is uh, he's he's seeing that uh, nobody's ridiculed, nobody's judged. Everyone can talk freely. Um, I, uh, I, I think it's important to add the profound level that you added just a second ago, but he might not have said, yeah. because it is quite possible to be in a group of people where people express their opinions. I mean, it happens all the time. People express their opinions and nobody's judged. In fact, Google did a study and said, it's a very interesting article, and they said that's that's one of the sine qua nons of, of projects that are productive, and it has nothing to do with the IQ of the people in the room. It has to do with, right? Um, but not being judged is not the only important issue. It's that the, the content that was being discussed yeah. was a very profound content, right? not only metaphysically and philosophy, philosophically, but personally. And everyone in the room was in a high state, which you won't get necessarily in a Google project group. We're talking about this, <laughs> right? So it's, it's not that we weren't just, it's not that we were just not being judged, it was that we were not being judged about some of the most threatening topics to the general population. When if it, it, to some degree, it's really to Montez's credit that he didn't freak out coming in the room. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, like, will he come back? Because we've, <laughs> we've already discussed when people are in high states, uh, there's no, you know, there's no guessing how those around him them are going to respond. You this is the whole nature of a pathologos, right? Is you see a kid in a high state and you freak out. You got to shut that shit down. Otherwise, as you said last night, it implies that. Oh crap! If you can do it, I'm, I I must have to do it. And what does that say about me, right? You said last night, and to the degree that he didn't freak out is is great testament to him because what was not being discussed was how to how to rearrange uh, window buttons in on a computer, but some the most important stuff there is to talk about, and the most personally meaningful stuff, and and it's, and, I, and a couple people who were willing to talk about it on a very detailed level. Um, So it was a uh, graduation celebration, <laughs> right? A toast. Yes, I am. And the judger was somebody who was new mm -hmm. to the group. <laughs> but if he shows up next time, it could be a different. Sure. If he shows up next time, it could be a different scene. Could be. It could be, and then no, it will be. It will be. And it might not this be. Time, next time. Yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like last night, it, uh, you guys all had a had a good discussion, and it, it was like lots of listening and learning mm -hmm. involved. Unlike kind of earlier this morning, where, you know, <laughs> the energy was different when we before we got started. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh huh. Do you have? Did you happen to have a uh, slap door to it that can gauge the energy level of the group? Uh, I was I was trying to compartmentalize who had yeah, yeah, worse energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe the Godshot Glazer scales can Pardon? measure. I said, maybe the Godshot Glazer scales can measure that. Hmm. <laughs> Think they're looking at their their computer? Yeah. And where the gods have a computer? And where did it originate? The, <laughs> the <laughs> negative energy, you know, where did it come from? <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> we've agreed in this group that you know it ain't all peaches and cream sometimes, and we still worked it out. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you think of the dreams then that occurred last night? Do you think that fit in? Fit in? Is that was that was that the question? Yeah, fit in. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, es especially Eldar's, right? Yeah. El Eldar's, Eldar's was about the logos. Yeah. Words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Well, right. What he actually the, the thing that he saw and that I saw very similar. That the uh, Gomez. Mm. What's his name? Mm. Montez. Montez. <laughs> By the way, do you know anyone else who had a dream last night? Mm. I had a dream. Oh, you did? Well, then he can contribute too, can he not? He can. What do you think? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> it fits with, with what unfolded. Mm. A, a, in terms of, uh, right, all top. Mm. All top uh, on the scale. What's that going to do to your artwork? Or what has it done to your artwork? I've, I just saw that. It, That's what you're sure. It, uh, it simplifies and, uh, uh, what's another word? Uh, Simplifies and maybe softens, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it uh, it uh, comes out uh, maybe g gentle is a word. A curious word you use. Simplify. I pulled out. Uh, right. th three works from quite some time ago yeah. 
and I was shocked at what I saw. Yeah. Oh, original. Yeah. Creative. Mm -hmm. New. Mm. Beautiful. Good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Did you see the vital? Right. I, I, I see his artwork, so I had a few more words there. Mm. Were you seeing the things in your artwork that you didn't see before? Was that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a learning then. There yeah. was a change, a process somehow that you went through, because the same artwork was there before right so it's now you have some different frame of seeing it yeah or a minus another frame of seeing it I'm still wondering about this idea that it takes the path of logos to complete a logos and so I'm wondering <laughs> now that he sees the artwork for maybe what it is it's pure logos how does the transition through his dream and what he mm -hmm. saw last night involve a path of logos that brought him to see the logos mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to still work out that idea. I didn't see where it went, so. Uh, what did he just say? Uh, his, the problem he's still working on. Something about how the, through the path of logos, you get to the logos? <coughs> how it takes a path of logos to complete or perfect a logos. I think that was the idea that he dropped on us earlier, like a atom bomb. Yeah. <laughs> See, if you want to, if you want to measure states of mind, would you not agree that in every pathologo scene, the child woke up to a reality he did not know before? Hmm. That he got it had to have gotten an insight into what makes the family and the network he's part of. Mm. Mm -hmm. And mm. he's seeing his or her role within it. Mm -hmm. yep. right. That fast, out of one event, no violence, nothing. So you, if you filmed it, you would, if, without words, you wouldn't even see what's going on. Right. Hmm. So it's the power of the state of mind expressed at that moment mm -hmm. is a logos. Mm -hmm. It's incomplete. But the truth of the matter is that that virtue of a, in a pathologos is its vice. Or put it another way, uh, vice is a shadow of virtue. Mm -hmm. The child sees the parent sincere, knowledgeable, capable, genuine, caring. Mm -hmm. Hey, it may be it may be an act, but nonetheless, it is a beautiful example of someone coming together, looking at the kid and saying what they think is reality. That so moves them. That's an enlightenment experience on a below water. But it is an enlightenment. You suddenly realize what the hell you are. You now have an identity. You now know the nature of the clan you belong to. And you're willing to adjust within it. Uh, that ignores the fact that it's incomplete and all the consequences that follow when you take on a false belief about yourself. Right. But formally, hey, it's a kind of enlightenment. Like when we ask people sometimes about incomplete, their earliest experiences. In principle, incomplete. Like people's earliest memories often have a path logos in it. Yeah. Like the very first formation of their idea of themselves in their, yeah. in their life has path logos right there. That's right. Like a waking up, they woke up, but at the same okay. time they took some baggage with it. Yeah. The same moment. Not me. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's the second and, memory. 
And you can't be, you can't have one if you're not in the, in the most excellent state. Which is open. Open. Free. Free. Yeah, seeing, right? Right, fun. Light, vital. Open, vital. So you yourself are in an ideal state with the super, superimposition of Apophilos. So you would, uh, you would not call this. Uh, so you, the state that you were in, that beautiful state before the imposition, could not be called uh, an enlightened state. Yes, that's why, that's why the people in the family have to act against this. Because it is an enlightened state. Because it is a free, open, expressive state, and they have to be willing to make a decision. Right. <laughs> Am I going to let that little stinking kid continue <laughs> with that freedom <laughs> and that openness, especially girls? You know what happened to girls who are open and free? <laughs> when they grow up, they're going to be raped, they're going to be seduced. i got to save my kid. Hey, there's my kid. He's open and free and sincere. I got to protect him against the violence of this world. Hey, kid, the world is full of shit. Uh -huh. No shit. Yeah, it is. No, be violent well, to protect him from violence. Yeah. <laughs> but what it is. And, and hey, we only survive because we're part of a group. You got to be part of our group. Mm. Right. So, so you can, so... I guess where I'm going, where I'm, what I'm interested in is the statement you made just prior, which is that it's of a low order, but this imposition of a pathologos satisfies um, the definition of a kind of enlightenment. But the state that we were in prior to it was also enlightened. Yes. But it was of a higher order. Yes. Clearly. So you have two enlightenments then. That's right. And a motion between them. That's right. But the motion is down. Right. You see, you believe that is the state you're in is really something. Say you're free. But suddenly you see your parents in a state you never saw before. I mean, compared to what you've been into, you look at that and you say, holy shit, that, my mom is seeing me, my father is seeing me. Uh, I exist now for them in a way I never existed before. I am somebody now. I'm a recipient of all of this. Maybe I have to see what I was before didn't match it and what I thought was real wasn't. This is real. That can't be. Mm. I'll give that up. It's not even giving it up. It's like it doesn't count compared mm. to this moment. Of course, later the kid may realize, hey, you know what? If that really was your parent in that high state, how come they didn't continue in that state? Why do they have to go through this shit? Hmm. Hmm. But we ignore that, see? We've been initiated. It's a, it's a sacred initiation, right. at the lower. But there's got to be some providence in it, or Pardon? it's just hell. Pardon, do it again. There's got to be some providence in it, or it's just hell. Like, unless, you know, like, there's got to be something gained, something that there w the nature of the good would not allow that imposition unless there was still some benefit deeper for the soul. Yes. You know, like, so in some way, they gained a question, or a problem, or that conflict between the two produces a benefit? Uh, a learning, like some greater like, I'm hoping. I'm <laughs> one, one of the finest examples of this is out of Nietzsche's description of the German soul. See? Mm. And in his writings he says, the whole object of raising children comes down to just one thing. You've got to show them, you got to demonstrate to them that you are nothing unless you can keep your promise. Go need that them. a person who cannot keep their promise 
is a shit and you have the right to put your heel on them and crush them because they're not worthy of being a man. Once you get them to accept that principle, then they've got the idea of duty. And that will bind them. So anybody who leads them, all they have to do is fulfill the condition of being a leader and if they are obedient mm. totally and devote themselves to this duty principle even though they may think their leader is out of his mind. Right. You made your promise. And mm-hmm. So all of the Nazi yeah. rituals is to get the people to promise, hey, there's the leader, you have to promise he can see, you have to go along once you make that transition that was why they always said I was only obeying orders, right? Yeah. That's mm-hmm. their defense, that. right? I'm I'm a, a soldier. I I'm in, implicit that's my, promise. That's my duty. Yep. I can't. It isn't that I believe Adolf Hitler. Right. I accepted that my principle is duty. I'm bound to stay and fight. Yeah. Or regardless, heinous, heinous of, heinous regardless of the absurdity of the situation. Mm-hmm. I always thought that excuse was a smoke screen, but mm-hmm. really it's a fundamental statement of their very yeah. cultural value, yeah. their right. cultural identity. That is what makes you German. Wow. Hmm. Is that, would you say that it's like psychic slavery? Yeah, it's right. just psychic yeah. slavery. Yeah. Sure. Well, and this is... Um, I, but see, the whole I, culture gets behind that. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. So everybody agrees with it. Schools, teachers, etc., friends, every, everyone are all hooked into it. Well, when you say schools, uh, and some of you have heard me say this already, but the first time that you read that excerpt from Nietzsche about, you know, can't accept it, can't do a promise, we should be glad to grind our heel into their jaw, right? Um, my skin crawled because previously I had been um, an educational representative for a kid in uh, elementary school who had um, had to have a special education plan set up for him. He's in special ed, and uh, they were giving him more and more and more homework, along with all the other kids. And they go home at the end of the day. You know, they spent ten hours a day at school now. Then they got to go home and do two to three hours of work. And this kid, given his ADHD and everything, it takes him twice as long on average to do the same. So he can never get it all done. And I brought in a book and a bunch of studies showing, hey, despite the fact that since the 50s, the United States has piled on more and more and more homework, all the studies show that have been done show that there is absolutely no correlation at all with any measure of success later in life. Everything from GREs to what, what jobs you take, to what, uh, um, what you make in the way of salary. There's no correlation at all that they can find between after school homework and any, measure, any of those measures of success. And despite that fact, and the fact that this research has been ongoing and now for decades, we're ignoring it all and going forward. And I was pointing this out to the teachers and I was saying, I want this kid to have zero homework at the end of the day. He has to be a kid and, you know, right? And I, and, and I pointed out all this research to them. And um, they said, well, even if everything that you are saying is true, um, he still has to be, he still has to learn accountability. And when you told us this, I never quite understood that context, but when you told us, when you read this, this Nietzsche thing about making a promise, which is just a euphemism for duty, uh, my skin crawled because I realized that this principle was essentially saying to me, yeah, well, maybe the homework's worthless, but they need to, to learn how to fall in line and to take an order. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. And if that's what our and she did not realize that the philosophy she's following is essentially Nazi. No, the, the it's country, a mild form of it, but that's what our schools are doing. Yeah. yeah, the country that produces more educated people who are more into reading than any other culture or nation national group has the least number of school days. Do not accept homework as a principle of learning. Yep. They want the kids to discover what it is they want to learn <coughs> That's nice. and give them the freedom to explore it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Norway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. 
I think I heard Finland is going huh? that way now too. See, our problem though, I, I don't think that's our problem. Everybody that I knew during the Nixon period, every damn person knew since it was in the newspapers and I read it, that one of his backers was the man who was responsible for designing and distributing school tests. And he gave Nixon a vast amount of political money-bagged contribution, and it became a law. Every teacher knew that was bullshit. But everyone marched along and followed it. That's the problem. And that still remains in place. We all know that's it's the problem. All the teachers didn't get together and say, "Look, we know this is baloney. Why don't we fight it?" Mm. They all have their jobs. They all have their destinies, teaching, and they com compromise with their soul, and that's what they did. Yeah. I taught for 50 years. I never gave anyone homework. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never had a test to see if they did their homework. Well, wait, 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 wait. Then we have to define homework because I took a couple of your classes here. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah. The first time I heard it, I was like, this guy's awesome. Like, what, what about the term paper we had to do for you? Hmm. We still had to do. We still had to do work. One paper. It's one right paper. At the end. Right? One paper. <laughs> one paper. They have to write. But it the, wasn't the homework was memorize the book. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> memorize the book. Yeah. No, sometimes it was like be familiar with these ten pages. But that's, wow. compared to every other class you had, it was like pretty mild. Like, wow, read ten pages. Not real hard. And it wasn't like yeah, but understand ten pages, it was yeah. read them. Wow. <laughs> See, but but even see, that in his, in his we want to create the, the situation where the kid can, can discover themselves through great literature. That's the only place you're going to find it. Sure, yeah. His example, Isn't that though, curious? Yeah. Mm. It can't be imposed, right? It's not like something you can't, right? Yeah. It's a discovery. You have to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think you guys have heard me say that there's a there's a school system around the world uh, less famous than say uh, Waldorf or Montessori or so forth. It's called Sudbury, and it comes out of Europe. And there are 200 of them now in the United States as well, but they're all over the world now. Um, and there's one starting up in Orange County that they're trying to get going called the uh, the Open School. And this is a model of education that is very close to what Pierre is talking about. They have absolutely no curriculum. And parents who go there to look at it and evaluate if you want to send your kid there, they generally conclude, well, it looks like the kids are just playing all day. And uh, they say, that's right, they are. And uh, they've got some great testimonies from students on their website uh, about projects that they took up that they got interested in. One kid started playing video games and said, honestly, all we did is play video games at the beginning. But then we got tired of that and we got interested in, well, how are these things run? And what's, what's the underlying philosophy behind them? And what are, what's the rules? And another kid wanted to start a band and ended up uh, getting a bunch of kids in his area. And they really got into music and the school got them guitars and a piano. And they, they, they see their role as another kid wanted to start a basketball team. Um, they see their role in this model of schooling as um, providing you with the uh, resources that you need in whatever path you decide it interests you. If you need a piano, we'll get the funding for a piano. Um, Hillary Clinton herself said that everything she learned, everything that she needed to know in her capacity uh, at the head of the State Department, she never learned in school. She yeah. learned in um, playing games in her neighborhood with her fellow kids. Mm -hmm. And they would, she said, we were very creative. We, uh, we, would all, we were always changing the rules. The games got boring, we'll change the rules. But we always did it with consensus. We would always agree on how we're going to change these rules. And that took convincing each other. And we didn't always agree. And she said, all the skills required to do that is what I use every day in the State Department. Well. I need to add with Sudbury, it's, they also call it unschooling, and it's been in place so long that there are people who have become adults in that system, and their lives are 
they demonstrate how excellent you can be in that kind of unschooling. Neat. It's been in place for decades. Yeah, I, I haven't followed the part about the, the graduate adults that you need yeah. to... And like if they want to get into college, they have no credits, but they go in for an interview and are so stunning that they get into college and, and they, or, or without college, they succeed at very high levels. And it, I mean, it, it's in place. See, in Orange County, three of us got together to start Waldorf School in Orange County. By the way, the second guy was our friend, uh, Oh, I... That was his name. Got a loss. Mo Mogi. Dick Mogi. Right? He said, Pierre, we got to start it. I said, okay, I'm for it. The reason for that is I had a discussion with several people in the Noetic Society, and we sat outside in Huntington Beach over a cup of coffee, and I said, we have to start a school based upon Platonic principles. Hmm. Huh. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. They couldn't try it. Mm -hmm. I said, "Look, we don't need a goddamn school. All we need is an empty classroom on the back of some church. Get the garbage out of that. They have plenty of room. Let's start it." They said, "No, we can't do that." That's how Orange County School of Waldorf started. Hmm. We started in an abandoned back room of a church here in Costa Mesa, and that's what started it, because we were able to get other people in Waldorf to join us. See, it had to already have its, exist its mode of existence. They couldn't try anything new. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There still has to be a new school designed around platonic principles. Mm. Waldorf is a compromise. Mm. But when we started it, we out. started it without their principles. We all agreed that we weren't going to teach the philosophy behind it, but choose mm. teachers who were free. Mm. Then, of course, the cons then it's inward mm. movement inside. Go back to Waldorf principles and now it's a Waldorf education. Back to twenty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> but I had one good school. Oh, thank you. I, I shouldn't tell you about it. Spill, spill. Could I have some when you spill? I don't know where you are. Please Ah. In San Quentin, Thank we you. started a school, the School of Philosophy, Religion, and Psychology. Wow. Hmm. It was a great school. All that time to study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Thank you. And later, one of our students wrote a book that started a movement. Hmm. Soul on Ice, hmm. Eldridge Cleaver. Hmm. Wow. No. Yeah. So nice. That was a good score. Nice title. There was no, no like trouble that. from the administration. <laughs> <laughs> no one had any problem with getting a time to read. Right. <laughs> <laughs> time they've got. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where to go with this, but I think it's, for me, it's amazing. What, what? Um, what is amazing to me is, this is a totally different subject, but what's amazing to me is, is that how even people at the lowest levels of functioning can still recognize a high state of mind and be, be and we know that they recognize it or we recognize it because we're, because they freak out whenever anybody's operating high, the people around them have to shut it down. Now they will make it about something else. Like you say, there's always two problems. The problem they say that's really right, and then there's the real problem. The real problem is you're in a high state of mind. And I can't stand that. 
but they'll make it about your shoelaces or something else you did wrong, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. for them to do that, even though that's a lie, for them to do that means they had to recognize that state in you, and that state is nothing physical. Yes. There's nothing physical about that state. You could say the same words in that state and the same words outside of that state, and you're in two different states of mind, and they can tell which one that is. Otherwise, they wouldn't be freaked out by it, right? How is it that even people at the lowest states of mind can still perceive so, see. Yeah. being? Do that part again. How is it that people even in the lowest states of mind can still perceive being in another person? Or even animals. Well, that's because there aren't any low beings. <laughs> Mm. She's been here for half an hour. Uh, Look here, I don't know, I've never met anyone who had more problems than I have. Hmm. You haven't met me. <laughs> Go ahead. Years on what you. do you mean? <laughs> I, got, I got kicked out of <gasps> high school as incorrigible at 16. Right? <laughs> they called me in and they said, this is the happiest day of our life. <laughs> You're out. And I said, thank you. Uh -huh. Right? <laughs> Correct. I couldn't keep a job. I was in terrible mess. Mm. I had to work on my shovel. There aren't any low beings. Hmm. No, but uh, there aren't. I like that, there but what I'm there saying no, is, there are no I didn't say Everybody's low beings. I said people soul. even in the lowest states of mind, the lowest states of functioning, like alcoholic fathers, can still recognize greatness in their own children. Hey, fifty percent of my uh, of my family are all drunks, alcoholics. But they can still perceive, right? Maybe That's, that isn't high enough, <laughs> but. <laughs> because, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, go because they're high beings, they just convince themselves that they're low, low beings. Mm -hmm. Schizophrenics can see. I would go back to the principles of what it means to see, and then what are, what are, what is a human if not, in one sense, a seeing being? Like, is it a part? Oh. what they're seeing or whether they're turning their mind, but what's inherent in? even the very act of seeing, like pri they have to see something that is. Now what they call it is a little different. Mm -hmm. um, Could it be that they are recognizing something that is great in the other person and they're afraid that it's going to come out of themselves, that they shut it down too, before it can awaken anything else up in them? I think I've seen that in my own experience. <laughs> And it's terrifying. That's why, that's why death penalty is so absurd. Mm. Because if you only got five minutes left in your life, you can make it meaningful. Mm. Well, Pierre often, often says things like, um, there are only two things, things in relationships between things. Maybe there's like two other experiences for us as humans and there's only seeing and relating to what we see. So there is a moment of seeing prior to how they relate to sure. it. Sure. Mm -hmm. so like, there's always a moment of seeing. Mm -hmm. and then, or can be. And then how we relate to that. That's right. That's the issue. Mm. And so, uh, no religion is worth it. No religion can help you with that issue of what it is to see, how do you see, how can you continue to develop seeing. They're all, they all fail. Those are the only three questions. Mm -hmm. They block it. They don't encourage so, it. That's all. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Seems like this is where I'm thankful for the Mino. 
because the Mio is about being stung, about getting a question. He calls that initiation in the mysteries. Ash, uh... Thank you for doing it. Well, sure was a fun night, and uh, you know, the, do you remember Shinzen Young of Community Meditation Center (CMC)? Remember that guy? Yeah. Well, I'm just mentioning him because he was talking yeah. about uh, Jeff was talking about people um, in a low state of mind, and he used to say that. Drinking beer and watching TV is the lowest form of contemplation, right? Ah, it is. It is. It is a form and so, of contemplation. I mean, <laughs> so I was just adding that a little. Did you want a copy of it? Or you yeah. Some... But it, it's it's true. It's true what that guy said. Um, not not Gomez, but. Mendes. Mendes. You don't. <laughs> it's the closest one I can relate to. Um, you don't see this kind of um, relating and dialoguing anywhere. Uh, so it's no surprise that he was surprised because, like, this is really unique. Like yeah. when somebody here says something, an another person hears it and always adds to it or, or helps to clarify something rather than to cut it down or say, make it personal or... Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a very unique, very unique... Nice thing. building. Nice building. Right, it's a piece of architecture. Mm. Hmm. When I check in on Facebook here at these meetings, I call it the Temple of Hermes. Mm. In some way. Well, what I think is also very rare is the lack of lecture. Wait a minute, though. Because that's, that's like everywhere. Lecture. Lecture. Let me tell you what I know. <laughs> It'll help you. <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't no lecture. No lecture. Yeah. Hmm. But growth. Yeah. <laughs> Curious. Hmm. Well, pretty good. Did you I think it's time. Thank you. Yeah. I'm here. You stuck there? I give him mine. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know. I was giving you that I mine so I, I could get this one. Problem. Okay. You're okay. Yeah, somebody else at the yeah. meetings, maybe. Yeah. Let's recycle it. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. May I leave this for Nancy? For the baby shower? No, it's for her. It's okay. I'll be in touch with you about your email. I, I, I mean, it's only I'm just possible. for a good time. Okay? It's only possible. I like it. Not a pressure. No pressure. Okay. Yes, Okay, I have just heard an interesting program before I got here. Uh, one of these financial experts were saying that within three or four weeks, Obama is going to announce that the DEA's program, considering marijuana as a class one substance, is going to be repealed. He is an executive act that's going to repeal the laws against marijuana use. Repeal means remove. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the same article, that this guy said, if you have any interest in speculating, the implications of this worldwide in the pharmaceutical industry is going to be tremendous. So if you have any bucks sitting around and you want to uh, mm. put it down on a possibility of this thing taking off incredibly, think about it because it's going to take place in one month. 
like all of the, the all the bio like all the biotech yeah. companies Whatever. in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> they passed the law of decriminalizing. Yeah, like Every one of those companies jumped <laughs> close to 800 percent. Wow. Wow. And some 1,200 wow. percent turnover. Sure so there's penny stocks available. I don't hmm. know how you're going to pick a winner, but you might hmm. want to look into it. Hmm. Be cool to be able to say I'm big in marijuana. So the big financier Soros is putting his millions in it. Who? S O R O S. Oh, George. So, so we anyhow, should start a for whatever that's worth. To fund our, our school. <laughs> yeah. So the big. <laughs> Come, yeah, so like, the big impact is going to be cool. when our good friend Obama is going to say we are going to decriminalize it. And they're now going to defund the DEA. Oh, well yes. yes! For marijuana. Oh, they'll probably, yeah. they'll probably put it into. And they've been gaining billions of dollars billions. by this racket of jailing people over marijuana. Yeah. And they're going to be defunct within a month or two. Yes. So. Th That's his legacy, at least. I don't think even the Republicans can reach out. Well, you know, well, I'm sure they'll like, try. The legalization of pot in California is going on the ballot. Sure. In November. Yeah. The, the recreational use of pot in California is going on the ballot in November. Yes, yeah, it's going to be in California. Yeah. Their Gallup poll already said 60% of the state was for <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. Cool. The last so, if you know anyone who knows how to pick Stop. under the possibility that there are going to be many companies that are now, right now forming to take advantage of California's new law, which is going to be passed, and Obama declaring it null and void, it's a time to, if you want to play the game. Mm. There's a really, really, really amazing uh, documentary I've told Barbara and David about and Regina already. You can see it online. KPFK has been peddling it as part of their uh, uh, fundraising. It's called Counter-Intelligence. And if you go to topdocumentaryfilms.com slash counter-intelligence, you can watch it. It's a five-part, five-DVD set, but it's archived on Vimeo. And what they get into in part two just floored me. Um, drugs as we all know now, but is so well detailed in this documentary, are how the elite fund their nefarious product projects. So the whole war on drugs is actually the opposite. Every time, and they go into it, every time a war on drugs starts in a, in a country, within a few years, uh, the drug proliferation in that country is threefold. And there's a DEA agent who says, I've been an investigator for the DEA for mm -hmm. uh, three decades now. Invariably, whenever I get it down in any country to a target, a person, who is really running things, they are always connected to the CIA. Wow. It's the CIA that has, and then they go into the detailing of how, say in Afghanistan, yeah, there was, uh, there was, you know, uh, opium production, blah, 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 but it was on a low level, only local use. Every time the CIA goes into a country, they uh, purposely exacerbate, they, perfect, they purposely... Um, Create faction. No, they, uh, they support the drug growth and work with them and benefit from it and then extract the money. The, the poster child for this is Colombia, of course, the absolute worst state in South America. Uh, and even Colombia only gets 2.5% of its own profits from all the stuff that's grown there. Um, the other 97.5 gets um, made outside. Um, but the CIA is running everything that's going on in Colombia. And it's only with the elite in that country that they can make this all work. So when they go into fields for show and spray it with all the chemicals so that it kills everything, do they ever do it in any of the fields that the elite own? No. They always go way out into the country and hit the poorest crops. Because the elites it's are the, the ones who are crops. making money from the drugs. It makes sense. So what this argues for is it says not just pot should be legalized, 
all drugs should be legalized. And Europe, in fact, is waiting for us. Like, we're way behind Europe. The Netherlands, for instance, even heroin, everything is totally, you, you can't, for instance, in the Netherlands, you cannot um, legally buy or sell heroin unless, you know, it's through an official channel. But there is no panel, there's nothing illegal about using heroin. So anybody who's addicted, you know, this is one of the worst drugs there is, right? And it's a serious problem. But if anybody who, who is addicted to heroin, uh, you go to a uh, hospital or a medical facility and they will administer it for you and also in, include programs to help you get off it. But as soon as all these drugs, no matter how nasty they are or how helpful they are, are legalized, it completely undermines um, the projects uh, that the invisible class, the elites, have. They, they can't fund themselves anymore because it now it's a fraction of the cost and it benefits the taxpayers and it goes all through the legal channels. So, so they're arguing we need to just legalize everything. Well, the implications, though, if that's the case, is they'll use the CIA then to function as terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. You think today? How so? so well, the then they will then something on their shirt. Certain. A create a um, situation where those using it are shown to be criminals of some sort. They'll undermine the the reality of it. Well, that's what and they're doing create now, the yeah. and create that the drugs for making it legal. These are the implications that it's really worse. That's how I see the CIA coming in and doing things. They did it in the French Connection, where they created two factions, and um, you know, the, after a while, people weren't sure who they were fighting—the good guys or the bad guys. And they initially thought it was good, but then they turned around, and, and the propaganda turned against those. So it's—I yeah. I don't. I like the idea, but I see that the powers that be don't like the that money resource drying up. Oh heck no! <laughs> sure. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go to the restroom. Hold on a second. Watch out here. Hold it. Oh, oh my there you god. Go. <laughs> 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 Let's hope the gods are on the.